Well, howdy there, internet people. It's Jeremy again. And we're back with No Gage No Glory in the garage. Today we're gonna to be working on something a little bit out of the ordinary. I don't know if you're very familiar with DML speakers. Uh, these are a type of speaker that you can uh, make yourself out of some pretty ordinary materials. This is going to be some of the materials that we're using and we're going to turn them into a speaker. I saw these on the internet a couple of years ago and I've been pretty interested in trying this out myself. One, because I used to sell audio equipment years ago and so audio equipment has a little bit of a special place in my heart and because the sound quality is supposedly pretty fantastic. Let's get started on uh, building these things and seeing what we need. All right, here we go. This panel is actually a foam panel that we got from Home Depot. It's very light and it allows for uh, a structure to be rigid enough to uh, stand up to the vibration of creating music, but light enough so that it can recreate music accurately. Uh, those are two really important characteristics of a surface to be light and rigid so that you can recreate music accurately. Here is our audio exciter. This is going to act as our speaker and then uh, it's attached with a 3M adhesive on the back here. We're going to drill a couple of simple holes on the top of it so we can put these eye hooks on it and be able to suspend it so it can move freely uh, recreating music. Speaker wire and resin to fill the holes that we drill for the eye hooks. Now one of the first things that we want to do to prep the panel for this process is we're going to pretty it up a little bit by cutting the corners off and rounding them out. It looks a lot nicer so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that suggestion. So uh, here's that process. Come along. I'm going to use this bucket to create a template for uh, a curved edge. Now that we have our curves, we just have to cut it off. There's a couple different methods you could use. You can use a, you know, a, a, a box cutter. You could use any kind of knife. I myself found that uh, when I did some tests on a, another panel before I started this video, I found that uh, a hacksaw worked really well. So I'm gonna go with that. Now see, I think already it's taken a really nice shape. Although some of those cuts were awful. Don't judge me. So our next step is gonna be actually sanding down these rough edges. There's actually a pretty coarse edge of foam right here that you can sand down real nicely and make it quite a bit more uniform. So here we go. Now that we've sanded these rough edges, I'm gonna come back with a, a sandpaper with by hand and kind of just clean it up a little bit more so it creates a really much more appealing finished product. Here we go. Make no mistake, you are dealing with foam. There is no sense of perfection and you have to be really gentle because it's easy to damage it and make permanent marks. Um, for instance, right here, there's just a, a kind of a permanent indention. I can sand it down with the electric sander, but uh, I mean, that's taking off a lot of material. And then uh, it's really up to you how perfect you want them to be, but just keep that in mind. Okay. Now in my case, I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper. You could use a uh, higher grit if you like, but this seems to take off the material at a pretty good rate and uh, it's also what I had laying around. All right, there she is, all sanded down. Looks pretty symmetrical. It's not perfect, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. You can see that, uh, you can see some sanding marks, but overall, it's not bad. Um, there's some options that you can do to make it look a little bit better, and uh, you could definitely spend a little bit more time with the sandpaper to just clean up those. Uh, rough surfaces and sand lines, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. 
Next, we're going to drill a couple of holes in the top here so that we can mount our eye hooks in it. We're going to be using some epoxy to fill those holes so that the eye hooks are, uh, have a good bite into the foam and it should be sturdy. So in our next step, we're going to be mixing the epoxy. What I have here today is West Systems slow drying epoxy. Unfortunately, we'll mix it today and we'll have to wait till tomorrow to be able to continue after we've put it in the panel. This product is mixed at a one to one pump ratio. So the mixing is actually done for you. It's super simple. Here we go. Now one tip to remember is when you're putting the epoxy in the holes, these are really small holes and the epoxy has to work its way down. So you're really gonna have to put it in slowly and let the air bubbles come back up. Once you feel pretty confident that the air is escaped, you're gonna put the eye hooks, in our case, in there and uh, set them in place. And you wanna to remember to turn them in the direction that you feel will be aesthetically pleasing or make the most sense for when you uh, plan to hang them. Okay, here we go. Now in our case, I'm using this little syringe that we had laying around the house uh, from Feeding Pets Medicine. So that's gonna work out nice. I personally want the eye hooks to sit forward and it looks like we'll have to add more epoxy to that hole. Now that we have our eye hooks in, all we have to do is let the epoxy cure, which takes approximately 10 to 15 hours. So uh, through the power of magic and editing, why don't we snap to get there? Love the snap. Keeps you from point A to point B pretty quick. All right. so. We have two panels. I went ahead and reproduced a secondary panel uh, to match using the same process. Our epoxy is dry. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of uh, spill, so it did leak down here, so there's a little bit of that. Uh, we may work to cover that up later. But mostly, we're just working on trying to find the functionality of them. How good are they? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the proper placement for the uh, DML uh, exciters that go on the back. There's a kind of a ideal placement of uh, one of the exciters, which is going to be a two-fifths, three-fifths uh, positioning on the back of the panel. So this is roughly 24 inches. So two-fifths would be roughly here. And then three-fifths would be roughly So we'll place our audio exciter right here. Now we'll just repeat the same process on the other panel. The audio exciter comes in a box like this. Okay. Has the adhesive side up and uh, comes in nicely packaged foam so it ships really safely. It has an adhesive 3M tape on the back side that you peel off before you put it on the uh, surface of the panel. Here's your wire connections which are pretty simple. These are uh, 4 ohm, 40 watt uh, capacity. So here we go, let's put it on. Now the top of the panel is up here. So um, in this particular case, I wanna point the tabs for the wire down and we're just gonna place it right here dead center. Once you have your audio exciters in place, you're pretty much done. Now you just have to figure out where to suspend them and then run your wire to them. I am going to at least temporarily suspend them from the racks I have in my garage here and then uh, I'll suspend them from either some twine or some fishing wire and then run the audio cable stone and then uh, let's give them a test. That's the part I'm really excited about. Here we go. So I have them suspended and the audio clearly will not come through this camera the way that you need to hear it. However, I wanted to give you an idea that they do make sound. Now my garage is a pretty much a standard two car garage and it fills this room really well. And uh, so here's some royalty free music that I can play and you guys can get an idea of how well they sound. It's not the best sounding speaker I've ever heard by any means. I'm quite particular. I like a really high quality speaker. I like a really clear, concise sound. 
but for a garage and for something I just made at home for, I don't know, 50 bucks, it's a pretty good way to go. All right, here we go. curious to see if that got picked up. There was a lot of crackling because I had the volume turned out pretty high. Um, that was interesting. rather impressed by the ease of which I can make these things and anybody can. It was super exciting to find the videos that led me to this and it's been pretty fun creating these in my own garage. Being able to have some high quality sound um, or reasonably high quality sound in my garage while I work. Uh, this has been a pretty fun project. I hope this inspires you to maybe test this out on your own. I encourage you to look into the Tech Ingredients channel where I found this and he makes a great video. I definitely recommend watching that. Thanks for joining me here at No Gears No Glory. I appreciate your time, I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate the fact that I get to play here in my garage and uh, bring this content to you guys in hopes that somebody, maybe even you, enjoys watching it. All right, you guys take care. We'll see you soon next time here at No Gears No Glory.